there is a lot of advice and tips out there for new and beginning teachers to become better and better teachers, and that's awesome. But one thing that often isn't talked about is how to survive those first few years in the classroom. This is a massive deal because we have teacher burnout, we have teacher shortages, and for new and beginning teachers, surviving those first few years is really important. So today I'm gonna to give you four tips that new and beginning teachers need to know in order to survive those first few years as a classroom teacher. Radio. So the first tip for new and beginning teachers is to ask for help. Do not be afraid to ask for help. It's completely normal to feel overwhelmed and challenged and unsure of yourself. It's very normal in fact. Every single teacher goes through it and you should be very open to asking for help and support. Those other teachers around you, guess what they're really good at? teaching. They will be more than happy to help you and teach you the ways of being an educator. They're happy to support you, observe your lessons, give you advice, give you feedback, and you should take advantage of that. One other benefit of asking other teachers in your department or in your school for help and support is that it uh, shows that you, ex you appreciate and value their experience and that they can provide value to you. It makes people feel good. It's going to make them like you more, and it's also going to create down the line a more collaborative collaborative relationship between you and them and that's only going to be a good thing for the students. So tip number one is don't be afraid to ask for help. Now, as a new and beginning teacher, it is very natural to want to create resources for your students and for your lessons. But tip number two is don't reinvent the wheel. And by all means, use technology to your advantage, okay? Everything that you want to create, quizzes, lessons, uh, activities for students, it's probably already been done. Sure, you can be really novel and be really creative, but you have many classes, right? So you probably have five classes and you have a four to six lessons a day, depending on your structure, maybe eight lessons a day. That's a lot of planning. And if you're being novel and creative for every single one of them, you are going to burn out. Now, remember, these tips are all about survival. So tip number two is don't reinvent the wheel. You're better off collecting resources than to create your own, especially early in your career, right? Especially when you haven't tried out many different types of resources. You're better off using them from others. And this kind of ties into tip number one of ask your colleagues for help and support support, ask them what they're going to do in their lessons, right? You're probably going to be in a teaching team. If you're teaching history, for example, you're going to be in a team of teachers teaching year eight history, for example. So use those other teachers. What are you doing in your lesson? And they'll tell you, oh, I'm going to be doing this quiz with them and running this activity. Ask if you can use that as well. Most teachers, most reasonable people even, will happily give you their resources. Yes, I understand that there are people out there, there are teachers out there who are very protective of their intellectual property and anything they've created is theirs and theirs alone, but they are few and far between. Most people are going to be more than happy to share their resources with you, especially when you're a beginning and new teacher right? So uh, if you're a math teacher, one great, actually any teacher really, a really great resource is, is a online website called Quizzes. It's a great way of creating quizzes and the best part is you don't actually have to create the quizzes. They have a bank of millions probably, I actually don't know the number, but probably millions of different quizzes you can use and run in your classes. Uh, I made a video about how to use quizzes, it'll be linked up the top there. Um, it's a great resource, I highly recommend it, but the point of this tip is not to use quizzes, it's not to do quizzes at all, but the main moral of this tip is to collect resources and use them rather than create your own. You will thank me in the long run. Alrighty, tip number three for surviving your first year or few years of teaching is to keep an open mind. It's very easy to get stuck in our ways as adults. Students are actually, believe it or not, better at trying different new things, but we have to try and live in their image and do as best we can to keep an open mind. There are so many different types of students with different learning needs. And in fact, there's a lot of people you'll work with who are, are very different and have different opinions. And by keeping an open mind, and it allows you to remain flexible and adapt to any different type of learning situation you find yourself in. It allows you to uh, be open to receiving different types of feedback and constructive criticism and actually take it on board and do something with it. And honestly, the most important part about keeping an open mind is it keeps the, the profession or your job fresh and engaging, right? Like when you're trying different things every couple of months and you're trying a new system or you're trying a different learning management system, 
system or a new quiz-based program or whatever it is, uh, trying different things makes it fresh and it feels new and novel and it's what keeps you engaged and it's going to help you through your first few years of teaching. So tip number three is keep an open mind, try new things and uh, do your best to improve and take all of that feedback and constructive criticism on board. And the final tip I've got for you guys is to take care of yourself. Okay, this whole tips list has been about survival and taking care of yourself both mentally and physically is of paramount importance. This will come as a shock maybe to some of you, but your students are not your number one priority. The school is not your number one priority. Results are not your number one priority. Your number one priority is yourself. If you don't survive, then there is no point worrying about your students. There's no point worrying about your results. There's no point worrying about your school because if you're gone, none of it matters. So you are number one priority. And what I mean by that is you need to take care of both your mental and physical health. I think it's so important to stay physically active, whether it's just walking or cycling or being in the gym uh, or swimming or whatever it is. Pick something that you can commit to because staying physically in shape and staying physically active is scientifically backed across the literature to help uh, your mental health, which is also of huge importance, right? Your mental health, if you're staying mentally sound and not getting too stressed, not getting too anxious, all of these things contribute to uh, better performance from you and that's going to cause better outcomes for your students. The other thing I want to talk about in terms of taking care of yourself is setting boundaries. Okay, whether this is, and in terms of boundaries, I mean like time away from school, not thinking about school. School is one of those jobs where, yeah, it's great, we get all these holidays and stuff, but it's one of those jobs where you can really um, spend all your time thinking about it. Spend all your time thinking about your students' results or, oh, that lesson didn't go so great today. Like, what can I do about that? There's so many different things that you'll be thinking of. You take home your work every single day. Um, and so you need to set some boundaries, right? My boundary is that when I leave school, I don't do any schoolwork, period, okay? Uh, unless it's the weekend. But during the week, once I leave that building and leave those grounds, I don't do any schoolwork. If I need to get schoolwork done, I stay at school, okay? That's my boundary. Uh, you need to set up boundaries for your emails because people will email you, students and teachers and your school will email you at all hours, right? You might get an email at 9.30 p.m. from your head of department asking you to do something you are by no means obligated to do that thing okay I would highly recommend you don't even keep emails on your phone uh, I do so that's a bit hypocritical of me but there was a period of time where I didn't have emails on my phone and I survived just fine okay you don't need to react to emails at 9 30 at night it can wait till the next day I promise you it can students will also email you at all hours you don't have to respond to them either now by all means feel free to do so but make sure you set up very clear boundaries for yourself so that you're not feeling obligated and over overwhelmed by teaching when you're not even at the building okay you are the number one priority your mental and physical well-being is of paramount importance so make sure you take the time to look after yourself so that you can survive your first few years of teaching look i hope this video helped you guys if it did make sure you give the video a like make sure you comment if you found these tips helpful and if you're starting in 2023 let me know what kind of videos you would like because i'm aiming to target most of my content to new and beginning teachers to support them through their formative years of education so if that's you uh, let me know that you're in the community i'd love to help you out thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video